It's another Matt Day here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic and this time we're talking about possible values of a random variable. When we say possible values of a random variable, they are values that are obtained from a functions that assign a real number to each point. So your possible values are really dif dependent on whatever your experiment is and whatever are your random variable. So you must have there a defined random variable so that you can determine your possible values of that random variable. We will be talking about these terms here, the following terms. We have the sample space. When we say sample space, this is the set of all possible outcomes in an experiment. You have also range space. So when you say range space, this are the or this is the set of all possible values for a given random variable. So do not interchange the two. When you say sample space, you will be containing in a set your possible sample. Next, range space, what you are containing on your set will be all values of that particular random variable and of course that will be based on the sample space also so let's go to the first example if a basketball team will play for three consecutive games what will be the sample space because when you wanted to look for the possible values here we will be needing our sample space just to get that possible values so let's go and find out what will be the possible sample space or possible outcomes here when we talk about basketball team will play for three consecutive games know that for every basketball game there you will only have two possible outcomes so two possible outcome for the first game and another two possible outcome for the second game and another two possible outcomes for the third game because again in every game of basketball you only have to win or lose so there will be two possible outcomes in each game so to get the number of possible outcomes in your sample space you are going to multiply those possible outcomes in each game so you have two times two times two and this is equal to eight possible outcomes so what we are expecting inside a set now are going to be eight possible outcomes so let's try to determine those eight possible outcomes again you may go for a listing method wherein you are very versed on what to write under the first outcome and so on but if you don't then go for the tree diagramming so when you say tree diagramming we are expecting that out from the first outcome we will be branching out because it's tree diagramming we will have branches per outcome here and that will be dependent on the next outcome meaning your branches there will be very much dependent as to how many possible outcomes are there on the next game so here let's start with our first game so first game here we have two possible outcomes you have there win or lose and then on the second game you still have two possible outcomes so that means you will be branching out here with two branches and also on this outcome we also have to branch out to two branches here because again your second game has two possible outcomes so we have here wl again and another wl so this would simply mean that if you win on the first game possibility could be you will be winning on the second game or losing on the second game so first game if you lost then you will have their possibility of winning or losing on the second game so let's now go to third game because again this is with three consecutive games so on the third game again there are two possible outcomes so we will be branching out to two possible outcomes so we have win or lose and not our two possible outcome connecting to that second outcome so win or lose 
then another two possible outcomes here, win or lose, and then another possible outcome as win or lose. So out from this outcomes here in each of the branches, we will be creating our sample space. So sample space is a set of all possible outcomes and we represent that with a capital letter S and then we have that in a set because again, sample, set, sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. So let's know our different outcomes. We trace our branches starting off with W here, trace the branch to the second game, that's another W, and trace that to another game, and that's another W. So we will be writing that there. We have W, W, and another W. Now next, now take note, regardless of whatever you've written there first, may, we, may you have written there L and W, this will also change with regards to the ordering of your sample space. And again, in a set, you may interchange your members in a set, but in our standard way of writing that one, we are arranging that one especially when it comes to values. But since this one here are combinations of letters, so you may not uh, do that one. So it's really fine. Next, let's go to the next one. So again, we still have L here for the third game. So we will be again tracing the branch. So we have W, W, and another outcome here on the third game. So we have W, W, and L. So if in the event that you are trying to list it down, what you will be changing here will be only the third letter because your second, the first two letters are going to be retained. So next, let's go to the next one. So we are now down on the second branch of your W. So we have here W and then L and then W. So next one here, we have W, L, and L. Next one, we're done with the W on the first game here. We go to the second game, I mean first game with L. So we have next branch is W, and then another one is with W. So L, W, W. Next we have L, W, L. Next one, we go to another branch on the second game. So we have L, L, W. And lastly, we have our L, L, L. So we try to check if there are eight possible outcomes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That means to say we are now done and correct on our possible outcomes. So let's go to finding our possible values. So let's say we are assigning a possible random variable here, or we're defining possible random variable, which is the number of wins. Now, if you don't know how to determine your random variable, you kindly go over my other video about the random variable, and then you come back to the video for possible values of random variable. So let's go for determining our possible values of this particular random variable, which is the number of wins. So we go back to the sample space. So that is why sample space is very important here because again, our possible values are based on the sample space and the defined random variable. So we have again, number of wins. That means we are counting the number of W here for each outcome because again, wins, we are representing that one with the letter W. So we will be counting W's here. One, two, three, this is three. And then we have one, two, we have one, two, then we have one, we have one, two, we have one, we have one for this and none for this. And it's a, that's a zero. So we go to assigning our possible values here. So take note, we let our X be the number of wins. So X here is the variable who holds now the values of your random variable, which is the number of wins. So we have X here, that will be equal to, we try to write that inside a set. So we list down all those values in there, but making sure there will be no repetition of the values because again, 
we're writing it as in a set in a set every element there or member must be unique meaning there is no repetition so we start with the smallest number this is zero next one we have one although we have three ones in there but we write it once only next value here we have two next value we have three so this is now our possible values of a random variable we have your range space we call this one as the range space range range space is a set of all possible values of your random variable okay let's go to our second example considering tossing a pair of unbiased coin here we wanted to know our sample space first because we are needing that one in getting our possible value so we start with knowing first how many possible outcomes are there in our sample space so we have here first coin we have two possible outcomes as head or tail second coin we still have two possible outcomes for another head or tail multiplying the two this will be now equal to four that means to say we're expecting in the sample space to have it four possible outcomes in there so let's do our tree diagramming so this is now first coin so this is our head or tail second coin we have another possible outcomes as head or tail and also here we're branching out to head or tail then we write our sample space so again we have here head head follow the branches another outcome head tail and we have tail head and then we have our tail tail so this is now our sample space or the set of your possible outcomes so let's go now for finding our range space or the possible values of the random variable now in this problem we have defined our random variable as the number of tails and we let the value be inputted on your x variable so let's go for the sample space so again we try to get our values out from the possible outcomes of your sample space so we have here head 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 tail tail head and tail tail so remember we have the random variable as the number of tails so we go back to the sample space and count the number of tails in there so we have here head head there is no tail at all so that's a zero head tail this is a one tail head we have one tail tail we have two so writing our possible values of that random variable now is zero one and two and this is now our range space so let's go over to another example so when we are rolling a pair of dice where x is the sum of the outcomes so we are going to find out how many possible outcomes are we expecting in a sample space so we have here um first die we call our one of this as a die if that's more than that one that's dice already so first die here we have six possible outcomes as one two three four five six second die here we have also six possible outcomes multiplying that one that is equal to 36. now since it will be taking up a lot of time when you are going to do the sample space on this particular experiment then i have here the ready-made sample space for your experiment or how we have obtained our sample space for our experiment so we have here a table method so we have one here one two three four five six on your row this is for dice die a next one we have our first column that's for die b now how to get your possible outcomes is to simply try to combine your row and column so we have here first one we have one one we have one two we have one three one four one five one six and so on so you get the sum because here your range space is the 
I mean, the, the random variable here is the sum of the outcome. So that is why when you are going to get the sum of your outcomes there, this might be the possible values of your random variable already because again, your random variable here is the sum of the outcomes. So the space here, the range, the, the sample space here are going to be the list of this one here, the 1, 1, the 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and so on. That's the sample space. Everything here it listed in a set must, will be your sample space. Now, we go to your range space. Range space now will be taking up the value which is going to be the sum of your outcomes. So range space here, which is your x, that will be now equal to the set of, we try to list down the smallest possible value of the sum. So we have here 2. Next one, we have 3. As you can see here, we have repeated value and they are incrementing it by 1 until 12. So we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12. So this is now your possible values of your random variable. So let's go over to an actual scenario. You wanted to know the number of students in five sections of your school. What will be the sample space and the range space? So again, in your school, this might be varying per school. So in my particular school, let's say here, in my sample space, I wanted to uh, have my section in which I'm handling right now. Uh, let's say I have my first section, so section one. I have section two, section three, section four, and then section five. So this will be my sample space because again, this will be where I am obtaining my values from. Now, our random variable here is the number of students. So that is why your x here will be now holding the values of the students in each section. Okay, so here, let's start with section 1. Let's say, for example, I have here 50 and I have here 48 and I have here 50 and I have here 49 and here 45. So my range space here will be containing now the value which is 45, 48, 49, and then 50. So there you go. That will be now the possible values of a random variable. So again, the possible values of your random variable will, will be very much dependent on your experiment. And so with the random variable being defined. So that's it for the possible values of a random variable. I hope you were, you were able to learn something from me today. And I hope you will be subscribing and sharing this video. Thank you and good day.